Hey team, we're going to learn how to source MDX content in Next.js to create pages for a blog. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. MDX is an authoring format based on Markdown that allows people to write JSX right inside of their Markdown documents. What that means is we can bring in React components right into our Markdown documents. That way we can add another level of functionality right on top of the easy way to manage Markdown documents. We're going to source that inside of Next.js, which is a React-based framework that allows us to build powerful web applications. And to start our Next.js application, we're going to start from scratch using the Create Next app. So to get started, I'm going to copy this yarn command. I'm going to go into my terminal and I'm going to run yarn create next app and I'm going to call it my next MDX. Once we hit enter, Next.js is going to clone down their default starter template and they're going to install all of the dependencies and get us ready to go. And once that's finished installing, I can CD into my directory and I can run yarn dev, which is going to spin up a local development server for us. And we can see once it loads, we have our new Next.js application. So once I open this up in my editor, we can see that we have some default styles. We also have the index.js file, which is our homepage. I'm gonna go ahead and update the title here. I'm gonna call it my MDX blog. And I'm also gonna get rid of this paragraph tag just because we don't really need them for our use case. And we can see that once the page refreshes, we already have that updated within our project. Now, in order to actually source some of our MDX content, we actually need some MDX content. So I'm gonna create a new directory inside of pages. And I'm gonna call that posts where we're gonna create our new documents. Inside that directory, I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it hello, hello world.mdx. And inside there, the first thing I'm gonna do is add front matter to the top of my document, which is going to allow us to provide some metadata for each of our individual documents or posts. Where the first thing I'm gonna do is define a title. And I'm gonna call that hello comma world explanation point and I'm going to also define a layout called posts which we're going to come back to that later but it's going to allow us to actually connect this post to a particular template for our code and then finally I'm going to add some content I'm going to just say this is my first post while you weren't looking I was also able to go to a site called fillerama.io where I created a few new posts just so that we have a little bit extra content to work from Feel free to work off of the Hello World example and create a few documents of your own, or head over to your browser to fillerama.io, which you can grab the same Futurama quotes just like I did. But now that we have our four MDX documents, let's actually start to source that into our project. To actually source our MDX content, I'm gonna use this plugin called Next.js MDX Enhanced, which you can see at the top here, they actually recommend Next.js MDX Remote, but it's a little bit easier to get up and running with this MDX Enhanced plugin, which will serve our purposes quite well. Now, if later you want to go to a more advanced solution, definitely check out MDX Remote. But to start out, we can install this package using Next MDX Enhanced. If I go over to my terminal, I'm gonna type yarn add MDX, Next MDX Enhanced. And I'm also gonna add another package, Next Compose plugin which this is going to allow us to actually, what they say, compose our different plugins. Where if we can look at the examples here, we can see that if we have a bunch of different plugins inside of our application, we want a way that we can load all those plugins easily without just a big nesting statement, where we can also pass in our Next.js config if we have something particularly we want to pass in. So for our instance, we're going to use this so that we can both use the Next.js config and we can also pass in this MDX enhanced plugin. So I'm also going to install this Compose plugin, going back to my terminal, yarn add next Compose plugins. And once that's finished, we're gonna be ready to get started. To get started, we actually need to create a new file in the root of our project, which we're gonna call next.config.js. To start, we wanna actually import both of our new plugins that we added. So first, we're gonna install and require our next Compose plugins. And we're also gonna grab our next MDX Enhance, which we now have those two constants so that we can actually use. Now, typically, if we were adding something to our next config, we might write it like module.exports, where we're going to set a new object and we're going to define our configuration. But because we want to use MDX Enhanced as a plugin, while also still being able to use the Next.js config, as well as use this Compose plugins, we're going to copy and paste it in like this, where we first have our Compose plugins function, where our first argument is going to be an array of our plugins. In particular, we're going to use MDX Enhanced, 
where the only thing we're gonna set inside of here is a new configure object for MDX Enhanced with a layout path of templates. As we'll see later, if you wanna actually also pass in a Next.js config like you normally would, you can pass that in as a second argument as an object. But what we're doing here is we're using MDX Enhanced to be able to load MDX documents into our project, where by default, it allows us to pick up the .mdx documents. What we're also doing is setting a layout path, which we're gonna call it templates, where we're gonna be able to create basically React component pages that will serve as the templates for all of our different posts. So I'm gonna create another directory in the root of my project, and I'm gonna call that templates. And inside that, I'm gonna create a new file called post.js. Inside here, we're gonna export a default function called post. We're just like before, we're gonna create a React component, let's call it div, and let's just say, this is my post. So what's happening is whenever we create our new MDX documents, if we notice this layout that we're setting to posts, this is actually going to refer to this post template. So when our page loads, it's going to use this component to actually create our page, where it's also going to pass in two props for us, where the first one is going to be children, which is going to be the content and body of our post or our MDX document. And it's also going to pass in front matter with a capital M, which is going to be basically the metadata that we define at the top of our MDX document, such as title and layout. And we can test what this actually looks like by console logging out those values like children, which for our intents and purposes is probably just going to be the React components. So it's gonna be hard to see, but at least we can see what this front matter looks like. At this point, if you haven't restarted your server, make sure you do so now so that it can pick up both the next, JS, the next config.js changes as well as the new template files. But if we go back to our blog, we can see that nothing has changed on the homepage. But now if we go to slash post slash hello world, which that hello world is the slug or the file name of our MDX document, we can see that we get that this is my post text that we added inside of that component. If we open up the console, we can even see that we have those children. We can open it up and we can see that it's React components like we were saying before, but we also have that front matter where we can see that metadata of layout and title. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paste in some changes to this post document, where here we can see that I'm importing a few things like the head of the document, the link, which the link element allows us to create internal links for our project so that it can load client side, but also loading up the styles that we're having the same exact things from the homepage. But inside of the project itself, similar to the homepage, we first start off with our head, where I'm dynamically passing in that title from our front matter, but I'm also going to dynamically create that title for our H1, I'm also going to define the children, which is going to pass into this div in the middle here. And then finally, I'm creating this paragraph tag with a link that simply links back to home. So we have an easy way to navigate throughout the site. At this point, it's really whatever you want to make it for the post. So whether you follow along with me as exactly it is here or not, this is the point where you want to start designing and creating the page for your post. But once the page reloads, we can see that my changes were reflected. I have my title. I even have my content where for this particular post, it was, this is my first post. And I have my back to home link where if I click it, it goes to that home page. We can even prove that this is working dynamically by going to another post where another one of our slugs or file names is my kit. And if I open that up, we can see that we have our new title. We have our new post content and we still have our link to go back to home. Now, ultimately when we have a blog, we want a way to show our visitors what posts that we have and link them to that actual page. So we're going to repurpose this home page that we get by default from Next.js, and we're going to create these different cards where they link to our different posts. To do that, we need a way to be able to look inside of this pages slash post directory where we can grab all of those files and parse it so that we can see all this data to show on our home page. And to do that, we're going to use a couple of packages, some coming straight from Node. The first package we're going to use is a package called gray matter, which when we install it, it allows us to scrape this front matter directly from these documents. That way we'll be able to see the file name that we can create our page path from, but we'll also be able to see the title, which comes from the metadata or the front matter inside of our document. We're also going to use the FS library straight from node, which we don't technically need to install this, but I like having it since I'm going to be using it as a dependency. And we're also going to use path straight from node, so that we can construct our different paths to point our project to. So in my terminal, I'm going to go yarn add gray matter as well as FS and path. And that's going to go ahead and install. Now we can spin back up our development server. 
Now, if we open up our home page, we're gonna go to the bottom and we're gonna export a new async function called get static props, which we're gonna to use to fetch all of our data that we're gonna be able to return as a new object with props, where we're gonna be able to pass in our posts. Now, before we can actually start adding and finding those files, we need to import our dependencies where I'm gonna import actually the promises as FS. That way we can use FS in an asynchronous way as opposed to a synchronous way. We're gonna also import path and we're gonna import our gray matter package so that we can actually parse our MDX. Now back inside get static props, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new constant called post directory where we're gonna use the path.join method as well as the process.current working directory or CWD to find the location of our pages slash posts, which we see here, which we're going to be able to pass into the different functions to be able to find these post files. Next, we wanna to try to find all those files inside of that post directory. So we're gonna use the fs read dir method, which that means read directory, where we're gonna pass in that post directory and it's going to resolve all those file names into the files na file names constant. We can even test that out by console logging out our file names, where because get static props actually runs inside of node, we're not gonna see that in our web console, but where we're gonna see it is inside of our terminal, which we can see that array with all those files that we have for our posts. So next I'm gonna paste in this bigger snippet here where I'm gonna create a new constant called files. And what's going to happen is I'm going to map through all of my file names. And for each of those file names, I'm gonna return an asynchronous function which that's all going to pass back to promise all. What promise all will do is say that it wanna make sure that every single one of those asynchronous functions actually completes before we have our files constant. So inside of each of those asynchronous functions, we're gonna run some functionality for each of the file names, where the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna actually determine what the path of that file is. Now inside of the file names, we remember we only got to see the actual names of the files. So like create delivery.mdx. That's not the actual path of the file, which we'll need. So we're gonna come back and use the path.join method where we're gonna take the post directory since we already know what that is. And we're gonna combine that directory with the actual file name. Then once we have that file path, we're gonna use the fs read file method where we're gonna pass in that file path. So for instance, for each of these file names, we're gonna look in every one of these different files and we're gonna grab that content and we're gonna parse it as UTF-8. That way we now have that content that we're gonna pass in as a string into our gray matter functionality, which we'll use gray matter again to actually parse that document out, particularly so that we can grab that front matter. So once we have that front matter, Finally, what we'll do is we're gonna pass back that file name so that we still have that reference as well as the matter so that we can actually parse it and look inside of that object and get the data that we need. So once all of those different promises for each of the file names actually finish, it's going to resolve into the promise all promise. And then we're gonna have those available inside of files. And we can see what that looks like now by console logging out the files constant. But now if we go back to our terminal, we can see that we have a lot more that's actually getting console logged out. If we look at this last one, for instance, we have our file name of mykit.mdx, which if we look quick back inside of our project, we have mykit.mdx, we have our title and our layout and our content. If we look in this terminal, we have the content, which is everything that we show inside the actual content for our post, but we also have this data object. Now, if I go back to my code, I'm going to update this and I'm going to find that third index, which is my kit. And I'm going to console log out just the matter and then the data of that matter so we can inspect and see what that looks like. And once it loads and compiles, we can see that that matter.data includes all of that metadata from inside of our front matter that we defined before, such as the title and the layout. So we're going to be able to combine all this data, including the file name, which helps us create a file path, as well as the title, so that we can actually create links on the homepage for each one of our posts to go to the page. So I'm gonna paste in this final snippet, where again, we're gonna use the map functionality to map through all of our different files, where as you remember, we have our file name and our matter for each one of these files. But what we're gonna do is for each one, we're gonna return a new object with a path and title property, 
where the path we're going to compose to show that slash posts slash the file name, which we're going to strip that MDX because that's not actually part of the path that we're going to send people to. But then we're going to find that title using the files matter data and that title so that finally when we return each one of these posts, it's going to have both the path and the title. And then finally, we can take this constant for posts and we're going to pass that right in as a prop into our project. Now to test that this actually works inside of my home component, I'm going to create that new prop and I'm going to console log that out so that we can see what that looks like inside of our browser. Now, once the page reloads, we can see we now have this array of posts where for each one of those posts, we now have a path which we composed using the file name as well as the beginning of that post link. And we also have the title, which will be the title for each one of our posts. So we can use this to loop through and create the links on our homepage. So to do that right inside of this grid, we're going to repurpose each one of these cards. So I'm going to take our posts and I'm going to create a map where for each post, I'm going to return a new instance of one of those cards, which means I'm going to get rid of all those other cards because we're not going to use any of them for our project. Now, because we want to create internal links, we need to actually add one more thing in addition to our anchor tag, where the anchor tag is going to create a new browser request to go to that new page. Whereas if we import a new package from Next.js called link, we're going to be able to create an internal link similar to what we did inside of our post page that linked back to home, but we're going to be able to do that for each of our posts to link over to that post page. So I'm going to wrap that anchor tag with our link component. I'm going to move this href. I'm going to actually strip that one and I'm going to add an href of post.path. I'm also going to add in a key so that React doesn't yell of us at us, I'm going to add it as post.path as well, since in our case that will be unique. But what I'm also going to do is remove this paragraph tag, and I'm going to replace that name with our post.title. So now if we open up the page, we can see that we have a new card for each one of our blog posts with our title in it. But now if we click over to that page, we can see that it's going to create a client side request over to that new page where we can navigate back to home. I can even go back and forth between all those different blog posts and is doing so client side using that link component. But what we also did here is we dynamically added all those blog posts right to our homepage to make it easy for somebody to navigate back and forth between our different posts. Now as one final example here, we didn't actually take advantage of any of the cool parts of MDX, where in particular, we didn't use any JSX components or HTML or whatever inside of our actual documents. So let's try an example of what that might look like. So inside of my hello world document, the cool thing is I can import that react image component from next image right inside of this MDX document, where now I can use that component right inside of the same content as the rest of my markdown. I'm going to paste in this component where for my example, I'm creating a new image component. I'm setting the width and height of 500 because for the next JS image component, you have to define the width and height, but for the source, I'm going to use an image straight from NASA that just simply shows blue marble or earth. Now, finally, we have to do one last thing for our image component where with Next.js image, if we're using an externally sourced image, such as nasa.gov, we actually need to add that as an acceptable domain or host that we can actually load images from on our site. And to do that, I'm going to open back up my next.config.js where we're going to actually add something to our Next.js config. So we're going to add images and I'm going to create a new object. I'm going to call a new property of domains where I'm going to define an array where I'm going to pass in www.nasa.gov. So what we're saying here in essence is for the Next.js images API, we're saying nasa.gov is an acceptable domain. Now, just as one reminder, we can see that Next.js even tells us that we added a change to our next.config.js. So let's cancel out that process and restart our server. But once our page loads back up again, we can go to hello world and we can see that we're now loading that image right inside of our post and we're using JSX or a React component to actually insert that image into our page. The cool thing with MDX is we can take that base of markdown and we can layer in the JSX components or React components to add a new level of interactivity or just enhance the experience of our application with our authoring framework. And once we pull that MDX into Next.js, we really open a lot of doors for the capabilities we can have for building a dynamic web application. 
What's your favorite part or use case of MDX? Or what's your preferred authoring format? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.